Доброе утро. Good morning. My warm greetings to our participants and the speakers in this hall and everyone who is present online. This morning we keep discussing the procedures of uh, establishing and conducting activities at AIFC, and we would like to dedicate the following hour to a very important procedure on the way of a participant, which is authorization. We would like to share the information that would be helpful to the potential center participants who are planning for applications for financial licenses and all participants of professional services who provide consulting on authorization. As you know, the idea of uh, developing the financial system in the region with diverse structure and complicated financial relations is in the basis of the strategy of our center. And to achieve it, uh, we see that there is a great focus on the part of the bodies and organizations of AIC, and there are special terms and for tax regulation, uh, visa regime, and other aspects. Jurisdiction of IFC for a financial company is quite sophisticated. It requires knowing a wide spectrum of issues, and what's more important is procedures with ensuring compliance with the minimum regulatory requirements. And the result of such a regulator dialogue, including the terms of authorization and the amount of resources to be expanded, depends on the competencies and understanding of this procedure. So this is the topic of our first conversation at IFC platform. We have about 200 companies registered with a financial licenses and professional service licenses, and each of those companies has gone its own path of uh, obtaining licenses, overcoming impediments, and following all of the requirements of our regulator. Our company has supported the majority of those companies in understanding the legal and regulatory implications of uh, IIFC and a half of all financial companies have obtained their licenses uh, with full support of Business Connect. And from our experience, it is the authorization procedure that requires coherent activities and high competencies on both sides from both the center participants and the supporting consultant. I would like to reiterate the idea that was voiced yesterday that we as IIFC Business Connect are highly interested in the development of the market of professional services under IIFC ecosystem with building trust of the participants towards this market. And we need to support increasing the number of professional qualified consultants in this market. And we appeal to all of the active consultants to active cooperation so that this key role in the market would be transferred to them eventually. I would like to pass the floor to our experts. I would like to thank everyone for active participants, participation and wish you fruitful work. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Bakhtiar. Good morning, distinguished participants of our today's meeting. Thank you for being here. Today, we are discussing the authorization procedures, licensing procedures for the companies that would like to receive an AFC license and work on providing their services. I am Aydar Shanturin. I will be moderating our today's meeting. Our participants include my colleague, Jeanne Diyarova, director of the Department for supporting attracting AFC Business Connect. We invited also market participants, the founder and the CEO of Outsource Director LTD, Azad Utibai. Before we start, we would like to thank our sponsors, ERG, Chevron, Visa, Huawei, and China Construction Bank for the opportunity they have uh, provided to us by arranging this forum. Thank you so much for your support. Our today's meeting would start with the description of the authorization procedure. There are several stages that a company must go through in this process. And the outline of this procedure would be provided by my colleague, Jeanne. 
Thank you, Aydar. Greetings, everyone. We are delighted to be the one of the first sessions today, and I hope that this uh, exciting topic will uh, give you good mood for the entire day. We will discuss, as my colleagues mentioned, a very important topic of authorization, the authorization process, its major requirements, licensing criteria, personnel, the uh, regulations framework of AIFC and which companies are regulated uh, in the center, the types of licenses, and then there will be Q&A. Let us start with understanding what authorization is and who needs that. It's a process of licensing, obtaining a permit for licensing for a company that wants to uh, work under regulated activities, ancillary activities and market services. The regulated activities are mainly financial activities for banks, asset management, insurance and so on. Ancillary service providers include consulting activities and market activities include crowdfunding, exchange and so on. For those companies, authorization procedure is required. After this procedure, the company may start their registration process. Uh, we dedicated our yesterday's session to that, which is incorporation of a legal entity or establishing a branch at AAFC. So where does licensing start? Indeed, it starts with filling in the required forms. For many companies, it is quite difficult to understand where to start. This is a starting point where they need to understand what's required, what are the requirements towards the company that would like to provide financial, ancillary, or market services. Today, we mainly focus on the companies and the requirements for regulated activities and market activities. We, will st we are starting uh, with the regulated activities application form. There is also a supplement form that fully depends on the type of activity that the company is going to conduct. Applications for approved and designated individuals are application forms for the candidates who are going to do uh, the obligatory appointments. Please remember this form. We will talk about it later. Along with the forms, the internal control documents need to be developed. We will talk about that too. After you fill in the application form and develop the documents of internal control, you have an option to send the documents to the support department. This is our department at the affiliated organization of AFC administration, AFC Business Connect. This is where we can provide preliminary verification of your case to make sure that it's ready to submission to regulator. We make sure that the minimum requirements have been taken into account, that all of the application forms have been duly filled in, and if there are any adjust adjustments or corrections to be made, we inform you about that, and uh, we fine-tune your application form. After the application form has been developed, you have the internal control documents, you may start the payment procedure uh, for authorization fees. The fee payment depends on the type of license that you are planning to apply for. If you're applying for several licenses assigned at the moment, because most likely at AFSA you would have to make certain amendments or supplements to that. After you submit the final documents, the regulator, the authorization department, this is the department that will assess your case, they will prepare your case for the committee. The committee is uh, the actual body that decides on issuing or not issuing the license or issuing the license under certain conditions or recommendations. The task of uh, the department and the regulator is to make sure that your case is ready for the committee or the board. Therefore, during the authorization, there will be many questions. They might be certain interviews. Please be tactful. Be tactful to your AFSA managers because their task is to make sure you're ready for the board and they do everything to help you at the board when your case is defended. You're not present. We are not present. It's only the AFSA colleagues who are present there. They must have full information on your future business. 
in case the board decides positively, you will receive a letter, a principal approval letter. This is not a license. It's just the readiness to provide a license to you in case you uh, meet certain requirements. It is usually divided into requirements and recommendations. Requirements are obligatory to obtain a license and recommendations. Uh, can be fulfilled after you receive the license, but before you start your operations. After that, you can start the registration procedure. Thank you, Jana. This has been indeed very interesting. Could you please dive into the details of criteria of document preparation and the selection of your personnel? Sure, yeah, this is a very important issue. The licensing criteria at officer are viewed from both financial and non-financial resources points of view. As for financial resources, it's the preparedness of this future company to follow the prudential norms, uh, the minimum capital requirements, financial state at the application moment for the founders. Non-financial resources include uh, human resources, the procedures and systems of internal control that are fixed in the documents and so on. If we talk about documents, at the moment you uh, submit the application for regulated or market activities, you must have prepared documents like anti-money laundering policy, risk management policy, programs and procedures of com compliance monitoring, investment strategy, and so on. Some additional policies may include uh, other policies depending on the type of activities you're planning. As for the regulatory business plan, there are several important bullets. This uh, regulatory business plan is the major part of the application form for regulated activities in case it's market activities, it's for market activities. It's a very important document and it's important to provide the information in full uh, amount uh, in the regulatory plan is the major starting point for the regulator to understand why you need to be given this license. Therefore, this business plan must to reflect your strategy, the justification of, of your future activities at IFC, your future organizational structure, depending on your legal form of incorporation, corporate governance. The regulator expects that you follow the requirements that each licensed entity has the board of directors, which is a managing body. And there are internal bodies like uh, investment board, risk board, compliance board. That depends on your specific activity, why it is important. Because for the regulator, it's another type of risk mitigation. It would be easier for them to regulate you. Therefore, it would be easier to uh, live for you as a financial company. Proposed resources, internal controls, reporting, the way you comply with all the rules and requirements of the regulator, and your financial forecast for the next three years that show your proposed income source, uh, your budget, your expenses, and so on. But what about the personnel? We would like to know more about who exactly is selected uh, as the and appointed as CEO and other key positions. Sure. As I've mentioned, when you fill in your application, your task is to fill in special uh, application forms for approved individuals and designated individuals. Approved individuals, well, first of all, who they are. In our rules, in FCG general rules, uh, they say that licensed activities, the companies who apply for those activities must hire for the key roles like mandatory appointments. They include two categories like approved and in designated individuals. Approved individuals are the ones that have been approved by AFSA. As you can see from the name, the regulator conducts detailed assessment for experience, for KYC, and so on. Approved individuals include the CEO, uh, they would be like senior executive officer or chief executive officer. Approved individuals also include the director role. 
that wouldn't mean like director for a certain function like marketing or HR or HR that would be a member of the board therefore the application form must include uh, the designation of a such a director financial officer of finance officer and compliance officer they also approved individuals for each of this person you need to fill in a special application form there are also designated individuals that include money laundering reporting officer uh, who works for financial control to prevent income laundering this is a designated individual which means that the information about this person uh, is required by the regulator in smaller volume there are other uh, positions that are not obligatory for all types of activities there are certain types of activities like banking or insurance for which those positions are mandatory thank you Jana. this has been really interesting let us move to our next speaker azad i have uh, some questions for you if you don't mind is it possible to, you know, to combine several rules inside a company? Which cases in your practice have you seen when it was possible? Thank you so much for your question. Well, ideally, everything depends on the specific case. It varies case by case, depending on the client. For instance, when a fund is being established that procures certain securities and this is a long-term fund that does not require like day trading like day-to-day -day, uh, observations and control in those cases you may ask a regulator to combine the roles of uh, AML compliance and other positions because this fund could have been established for buying certain instruments and wait for like a couple of years without working closely on them but uh, those uh, if this is a non-exempt fund uh, when the, there are some retail clients or some permanent activities the regulator would require more in those cases to the staff team to control those aspects and there will be no combination of roles so the regulator looks case by case depending on the complexity of the activities of the financial institution thank you Azad that's really clear and we understand that combining roles is possible depending on the situation that each company faces. Jana, coming back to you, what are the criteria that we follow when we select the relevant key positions, key roles to a licensed company? Thank you for your question. The human resources are very important in the authorization process and indeed we look at the following criteria for approved and designated individuals which include competencies and qualification of candidates how relevant their experience is to a certain candidate role for instance if it's a CEO candidate it cannot be like yesterday's butcher but today they want to be a head of a financial company. The same is true about the CFO, chief finance officer. There are certain criteria about the competencies uh, from the perspective of both financial and accounting experience because the regulator's expectations uh, from the finance officer is that they would be both responsible for uh, operations and administrative and uh, major financial decisions so compliance and AML officers are the positions most clients wonder about and how do you find the candidates for those roles so compliance officer is a young profession in Kazakhstan but we have uh, these people we have those professionals the candidate should have the relevant experience should have been working in as a compliance officer or responsible for ensuring compliance to certain regulations and uh, they should have worked in a financial services for AML of course we require relevant experience highly desirable that they should have worked with um, a financial company and the regulator will be checking for certifications and uh, t testing and the relevant testing on AML
And now this has been really detailed description. Frequently asked question is about the regulatory base, uh, regulatory framework of AIFC. Where do we get those rules? Who has written those rules? What is the knowledge base of ours? Uh, some may say that they've been imposed on us, but actually the regulatory framework of AFC defines the criteria and requirements. So how do we know that about the approved individuals and their criteria, the licensing process and so on? So it's not something we invent in those are acts and rules that have been approved by our regulator. The fundamental act that regulates the company activities like financial market and ancillary uh, service companies that give the regulator the right to decide whether to license to license it's AFC financial framework regulations it defines the major uh, principles of uh, financial services regulation and contains the uh, provisions on functions and uh, powers of the Committee for Regulation of Financial Services, the one that provides licenses. Then we go down to detailed acts, rules, regulations like general rules, anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist finan financing and sanction rules, uh, conduct of business. As for general rules, they contain like um, overall requirements towards licensing. You can find information about approved individuals there, uh, risk mitigation, and so on. As for conduct of business, this is a very important role that describes the principles of financial companies' uh, uh, interactions with counterparts, clients, and other market participants. There are more detailed roles. I won't be dwelling on them, but uh, the higher the level of uh, digitalization is, like collective uh, investment scheme rules, which are the rules about the activities of companies that deal with uh, fund management, like representative rules. So they uh, are very specific under uh, the support of uh, preparing the applicants. Uh, with their policies, the regulator has issued guidelines that describe the minimum requirements from those policy perspectives. You can find them on afsa.kz website under Guides tab. For each guide, you will see the expectations of the regulator for your application. It's great, Janna. It's really important because many potential participants often ask where they could find a certain rule, so what they should be guided by. So the first recommendation is to look into those guides and you will see what are your authorization stages and so on. Now this question, so we talk about authorization, we talk about licensing, but who is licensing? Who is following at AFC? the rules of license um, obtaining. We already know that there are companies who can go through registration process. They can just get registered and they can start operating. But who requires the licensing for their further activities? This is the question. So when we ask ourselves a question, do we need a license or not, the life hack that I've been using for years working with AIFC is to ask yourself whether the company is uh, going to be managing third party money or have access to third party money? If yes, then most likely you will need a license. So what companies? Those are the companies that deal with financial services, banking, asset management, Islamic financing, insurance, fintech, and so on. In most cases, they have access to money. They manage the funds of third parties. There are market institutions that are licensed for market activities like exchange, crowdfunding platform, digital asset platforms. And there is also a category of licenses that are called ancillary service providers. Uh, Azad is a representative who has been licensed for that, that include legal, auditing, accounting, consulting services, and so on. And I would like to know that there is a status that's called recognized non-IFC member. Da 
that particular status also requires authorization. This is incomplete registration and licensing. You don't create a legal entity, but brokers, financial institutions receive access to our AIX exchange, and that particular status is given after you are authorized. Um, you get the access to the exchange, but you don't create the legal entity. As for the cases when you have asked yourself a question, uh, I am not managing the money of the third parties. I manage my own money. What do I do in this case? Most likely you don't need a license because because you manage your own funds and that does not envisage risks. You are assuming your own risks. You are spending your own money, direct, directing it where you want. So most likely you need not a license, but if you have some concerns, please come to us and we will explain. Thank you, Jana. More details, what kind of licenses you have for our information for us to be aware of what we can select. Uh, in the center, you can receive licenses for various services. That, again, depends on the activities of your companies or your future profile. On screen, you can see the list of licenses you can receive when you authorize yourself in the center. I do not want to quote the whole list, but asset management, investment management, banking activities, a lot of licenses, insurance, market, uh, custodian services, auxiliary services, and others. So most frequently, that is a question uh, about uh, you need to decide whether your activities are subject to licensing or not. You can go for general rules where you have the full list of the licenses available. And if your activities uh, fit a certain license, maybe you need not an authorization. Clear. Okay, Azad, you seem bored. I got a question to you. Out of those licenses and procedures that we have discussed here so far, in your practice, what is the most frequent, the most popular license that people dream of receiving in the center? Please tell us. Well, first, before a client goes uh, to the procedure, license selection procedure, the, cl the client needs to answer a question for what, what kind of activities they will perform. So the clients may be divided into two parts. The first one are professionals, people who know what they want to deal with, asset managers or some other professionals, financial institutions from other jurisdictions who operate in Dubai, Singapore. And one day, they make a decision to expand geographically, penetrate Kazakh market, and receive a license here. Usually, such teams know for sure what they want and what they're capable of doing. There are some other clients, and when you talk to them, you can offer something topical or essential or relevant to them. Uh, for example, somebody brings us a client, a consultant client, and we can direct that person to auxiliary services where they can benefit most. Recently, we have had a case. Uh, we took a payment in US dollars Uh, quite an unusual transaction for our practice. So for consulting companies, that is a measure of ensuring reliability, accounting support. So the, that goes as auxiliary services. There are some nuances when clients who deal with, for example, uh, distribution services. For example, they sell special machinery. 
we can finance uh, a leasing operation that will give them expansion, business expansion. So what does the license give you at all? That is reduction of operational expenditures minus VAT and a number of other taxes, uh, taxes on dividends, for example. So your operational activities are quite profitable in our center. We deliver financial services. Uh, so the main advantage about having the center is in these kind of activities. The thing is when we talk about benefits and advantages, why at all to come to our center? Of course, there are a lot of details, but for financial companies, first of all, those are tax uh, privileges and clearances. That is one of the arguments why you might want to operate here. Common law from UK, that is another advantage. But first of all, for financial companies, that is taxes. Also, I want to talk separately about clients who come to us and sometimes need some direction, what they need. Uh, basically, we discuss with them their activities. For example, like this one client we have, he says, I have a certain amount of money and I've decided to create a fund and buy some conservative assets, bonds, some premium shares, etc. But this is an intergroup, internal group uh, transaction. If the money is from the group, then they do not need a license because the money eventually be, belongs to just one person. But if they say we want to take some money, trial it for one year or two, well, we have our own asset management, AML compliance, who will come to the market and expand. Uh, so mainly such teams, they value dynamic development. For them, immediate addressing to some non-exempt fund or some other complicated instruments would be a big challenge for initial stages. So they can go for a step-by-step -step approach. That is why in our company we have this product. We call it design of a roadmap. A client comes and we tell to that client, you can first receive this simple licenses, maybe you are arranging deals, advising on investments where regulatory affairs are far more simple. You can take a look at how it happens. You can build up a team, uh, build up a couple of successful cases, and then you can apply for another more complicated license. Maybe you want to expand your license eventually. So these are the clients that require more explanation and indication as to their further steps towards their end goal. Excellent. Azad, very detailed report. We'll have m more time to share experience. Now we are having a Q&A session. We already have questions from the auditorium. So please, question from Bekaris Kabi. He is asking, is it permitted uh, to have privileged shares in the center? I mean shares without voting right. Within well, the framework of our regulation, corporate regulation, not financial regu regulation, but corporate regulation, it is allowed the issuance of certain securities, if it is indicated so in the articles of association of the company itself, in case those articles envision such a procedure, and as well as envisage certain rights that may be done, if of course that does not confront our rules. May I amend something, add something. This is probably one of the greatest benefits in our center because you have capability to circulate various shares. When we talk about Kazakhstan, 
We talk about joint stock companies with a lot of regulatory affairs a company you need to publish a lot of reports if you make any changes you need to report those changes as well uh, for example you are a private company in the territory of AIFC you don't have a charter capital and the interior register of shareholders is conducted by yourself again if that is not a financial activity and what is interesting here, a company without a license may adapt its charter by adding various votes, for example, in addition to the shares. Maybe some shares will have more votes, others will have less. Minus one vote, the right to receive dividends, etc., etc. So, uh, Thank you very much, Azad, for a very detailed answer. If the audience has any questions, you can raise your hands and our colleagues will help with the microphones. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much. It's wonderful. A lot of details. My name is Sergei Pertnikov, the founder and the manager of the Devon Fund registered in Cyprus. I have registered the fund in 2018. The registration process was complicated. It lasted for a year and a half. But one detail that perplexed me in the Cyprus I wanted to discuss with you. That is the great number of requirements imposed by the regulator in the in the sphere of compliance, money laundering, etc., etc. Then a participant receives a license, registers a company, goes to the bank, which is regulated by another authority, a central bank, and the bank tells you suddenly, forget about everything. Now you are coming to us, so. Here we can see quasi-regulation. You have passed through all circles of hell. Now everything is rejected. And in the bank, you have to re-register yourself in accordance to totally different standards. Is there any harmonization among the requirements of the AIFC regulators and the banks? operating in Kazakhstan. Why in Kazakhstan? Because banks in other jurisdictions do not even consider other participants because they do not understand all nuances. Uh, you have told a very detailed story, but it is okay only when banks trust the requirements imposed by AIFC regulator on licensed companies. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. That is a very important topic. I do agree that the success of operations of the company shall depend on the ecosystem that was built, uh, the jurisdiction, and the regulators. As to quasi-regulation you are referring to, Astana Financial Service Authority is an independent regulator with the right to register and issue licenses. From the standpoint of main activities, the full regulation comes from them, but there is the so-called joint regulation together with the National Bank and our regulator, for example, in such cases as currency regulation. Uh, how does it manifest itself i mean joint regulation those are joint rules minutes statutes procedures that regulators discuss in between themselves and coordinating between the, themselves when the problems appear from the standpoint of the aifc the constitutional law states that all question uh, uh, pertaining to AIFC are the privilege of the participants and if there are no provisions Kazakh legislation shall prevail of course there are certain discoordinations for certain companies in certain rules but from the standpoint of currency for example this year we have signed a document about currency regulation at the present 
as my colleague Azad has told, we already are having currency transactions in certain types of activities. I'm not saying things are all ideal, but when we see problems, we know about them. We collect information about problems and we work to resolve them together with the regulator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jana, if there are more questions from the audience, please. Thank you very much. Good morning. Jana Azad, can you tell more about the policies? The site, the website indicates that there should be no repetitions, there should be detailed analysis. All of your policies are typical money laundry compliance. So are you checking are you checking uh, the possible unauthorized copying and pasting of information? So uh, now tell me, is it so that funds are supposed to have their own boards of directors, members of which are supposed to be involved in operational activities? Uh, question number one, policies. From the standpoint of plagiarism and to what extent these policies, I mean money laundering, reporting and compliance, all those documents must be done in accordance to our rules. Of course, there are certain requirements that must be put. For example, complaint handling must be done within a certain period. Complaint handling procedure must be as uh, indicated in rules. So if you see a certain plagiarism, the regulator shall treat it okay. Another question is when we talk about policies downloaded from Google, for example, when we talk about risk management or compliance management or manual, of course, compliance manual for a fund management uh, company shall be totally different than that for a bank. But we also see that applicants are not saving money on the consultants. They download policies from Google. Sometimes those documents total three pages. Well, in such cases, this is what we're talking about. These are not templates. This is not plagiarism. All policies must be in accordance to the rules and adapted, modified in accordance to your activities. As that, do you have anything to add about rules? Yes. A client comes to us and asks us to write something. Uh, for us not to suffer from the claims from the regulator, we say, yes, okay, we can write whatever you want, but you need to follow those rules we are writing down. When the provision starts, when you start your own operations, we shall not be supporting you. You will have to comply to all those policies and procedures. This is when each client will have to think about maintaining a balance the maximum simplification of procedures a client wants to have in the business processes is one thing, but there's another thing, a requirement from a regulator. So this is when you need to seek out and establish a compromise. So uh, there are certain things that must be in place on mandatory basis. Others are just build-ups, voluntary ones. And together with our clients, we always have talks about policies, what those policies are inclusive of for those clients not to have problems and misunderstanding in future. For example, we have a question. We have AML uh, inspecting us. Who is inspecting AML in their turn? Uh, such procedures must be written down in the Compliance Bureau and those documents must be more breathing, not firm and stagnating. So when a client is designed together with a client, you receive an appropriate quality. In responding to your question about directors and BOD, in the classical structure between the fund and the management company, there are certain 
legal relationships, a contract, an agreement, a managing company might become the founder of a fund. And we we are talking about licenses for investment funds. There are no requirements because the funds, they just register. They do not get licenses as to the director requirement. The management company is supposed to have a BOD with the directors with appropriate experience, knowledge, people capable of influencing positively the company management. But the fund itself is not required to have a BOD because the fund is not subject to receive a license. Azad. We have three minutes left. There are a lot of interesting questions. Unfortunately, we shall not be capable of discussing all of them. But there is an interesting one. Good day. Can you tell us about the opportunity to license companies, for example, banks capable of rendering services outside AIFC to non-residents of AIFC? From the standpoint of the banking activity, the banks that want to render services to non-residents of our center, that is permitted. But there is one important nuance. You need to understand the compliance procedure, conduct of business, the way you define uh, how to approach the client, what the boarding procedures would be like. Uh, we don't envisage any contradictions there. It is important to understand how le, uh, relevant is the currency regulation and within the currency regulations, how far can you deliver services to non-residents? Are they the residents of Kazakhstan at all or residents of another country? You will need to take a look at that in accordance to our rules. Basically, how far does your license extend towards residents, non-residents? Thank you, colleagues. This is it on our side. Thank you very much for your attention. Your questions may be directed to our corporate email. This is on screen. We will be happy to answer. Jeanne Diarova, Azat Utibay, and myself, Aidar Janturin.